Hello everyone, this is Sirat International Relation News. The impact of the novel coronavirus or COVID-19 brought us many lessons. We responded, we implemented and we seek for a newer way to treat the disease. What is important is how the knowledge derived and to be applied to treat the disease, not just only the COVID-19 but all new emerging diseases. The answer is through the clinical research. In May, there were many of CIRAD personnel, including executive board members, turned themselves into research volunteers for COVID-19 crisis research monitoring project at CIRAD Institute of Clinical Research. And today, we are learning about how this project is important and it benefits with the expert, Professor Kun Kanya Chokpai Bunkit, the director of Cycrest, and Professor Pediatric, Faculty of Medicine, CIRAD Hospitals. Swadika, Professor Kunganya. Swadika. How are you today? Very well, thank you. How about you? I'm good. Good. Okay, without any further ado, let me start with the first question. Uh, may I know about the objective and the role of Cycrus? Well, welcome to Cycrus. Cycrus stands for Siri Raj Institute of Clinical Research. Uh, here we are the new setup of a clinical research center where we want to maximize the potential of the clinical research for, uh, facility and capabilities uh, in Siri Raj Hospital. As you know that Siri Raj is the largest and oldest public hospital in Thailand. So a large number of experts uh, and clinicians who have a lot of clinical research potential, they don't, they don't have time. So Cypress set up to help them, facilitate them, so that we are uh, doing the clinical research uh, successfully. What are the projects that you're conducting now and its benefits? Well, Cypress has been conducting and supporting more than 45 studies in uh, the Cypress facility itself and also supporting uh, the investigators, clinicians at Siri Raj Hospital in various specialties. We have uh, more than 10 specialties uh, of clinical trials that have been conducting. And of course, most of the trials uh, have uh, direct benefit to the subjects themselves. And many of them provided the very crucial, important knowledge to develop uh, and uh, improve uh, the interventions to the patients in the future. During the COVID-19 crisis, I heard that you have the project to alleviate the impact of the epidemic. Can you give me an in-depth update on that? Yes, um, the studies about COVID-19 are one of those uh, studies that has been initiating uh, and conducting in Cyprus. Uh, when the outbreak started, uh, we have a very in-depth discussion among the uh, research team, the investigators, the experts, and we uh, initiated three projects very rapidly. Actually, uh, probably the fastest uh, protocol development of all. Um, we have three studies uh, start right away, almost right away. The first one is about to understand the um, uh, outbreak situation, the uh, uh, epidemiology of the outbreaks of uh, COVID-19, uh, particularly in the context of healthcare members. So uh, we uh, started the uh, zero prevalence projects uh, in healthcare workers. Uh, we conducted it into two groups. Uh, in two groups. Uh, the first group is among the frontline healthcare workers and the second group is among the healthcare workers who are not in the front line, but of course they are in the environment of the hospital. We would like to understand uh, what is the epidemic and zero, by studying uh, zero prevalence among these healthcare workers. And when we understand more about the uh, epidemiology and the situation of the outbreaks, we then can uh, 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 manage uh, the uh, preventive measures appropriately. Um, the second project that we started almost right away as well is the project on preventive measures of the household members of uh, the patients who have confirmed COVID-19. 
uh, more than 70% of all the cases of COVID-19 acquired infection from their uh, household members who came down with COVID-19 uh, infection. Uh, and um, when uh, one, the first one in the family was diagnosed with COVID-19, uh, the family members started to be scared and of course uh, they are the highest risk group to, to get COVID-19 after the first case. So we initiated the uh, uh, concepts about how to prevent uh, pharmacological prevention. We initiated the ideas about using uh, colloquine uh, once weekly for two times. Okay, so it's very easy to take. And we still believe that it is useful okay, uh, to prevent the household, member, uh, the, the household members uh, from getting uh, COVID-19, uh, uh, contracting from uh, the confirmed case. Unfortunately, the uh, COVID-19 outbreak uh, situation in Thailand has been very well controlled. So we are still open for the study, but we don't have uh, the subjects to enroll because we don't have the cases. And the third study, which is um, uh, in the process of opening uh, the studies, uh, it is uh, the trial of using Favipirovir, which is the antiviral agent um, that we expect to be highly effective among those who are not severe disease, you know, who are mild, in order to start the treatment early and prevent them to continue or progress to be severe disease. So uh, this is another study that we are looking forward to open very, very soon. And that if we have this kind of uh, knowledge about the efficacy of this drug, which is the oral medicine, is not that very expensive. So if we are able to prove that uh, the medicine, the favipirovir, is effective, then you know once you come down with COVID-19, you're starting to have fever and you suspect yourself have, having COVID-19, you go ahead and test, and then you get treatment early. Then you feel assured, it can assure that you will not progress to be severe or uh, become, you know, pneumonia, something like that. So uh, this is very important and very crucial. Uh, we still lack of data about uh, how to um, uh, convert the disease, uh, how to intervene very early, in initiate the treatment very early, as soon as possible. Then we can uh, stop progression and we can uh, make sure that the patients are you know, uh, recovering very fast. Yeah. All the three studies is very important, and uh, I would like to know that uh, what about the people who 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 have maybe worried about joining the research volunteer? Do you have any advice on that? Yes. Um, you know, many people you know feel like uh, participating in the clinical trials is like a guinea pig. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we can understand that because, uh, you know, uh, when it, uh, the result is still uncertain, uh, it is not the standard of care, uh, you call it clinical trial. And that, of course, is the trials, it means that it's not sure yet. But at the bottom line, if we don't conduct clinical trials, we will not be sure that uh, the uh, interventions is effective, is efficient. But on the other hand, we have uh, another measures uh, to make sure that all the volunteers are very, very safe. So um, the study uh, process and also the design of the study will be reviewed by the ethical committee that uh, we call the IRB, the Institutional Review Board, uh, to make sure that the volunteer will be safe. And the volunteers are, you know, the very important contributor to the knowledge in medicine. Because if you cannot conduct a study, if you don't have volunteers, you will not be able to generate new knowledge. And then you will not be able to improve uh, the uh, interventions to the treatment to the patients at need. Okay. What, what is the obstacle and how did you surpass this, Professor? 
Yes, uh, one of those is uh, like the last question, the previous question, that uh, the volunteers are not that very willing to participate okay. um, because they worry about their safety, uh, they are too busy to participate and so on. Um, uh, so we did a lot of campaign to uh, tell them that being a volunteer is very big contribution, you know. Just like when you donate something, you donate um, your, your time and uh, perhaps your blood sometimes, uh, according to the study. It's very important that we generate new knowledge from your uh, uh, volunteership uh, to be able to you know, uh, generate the knowledge to help other people. Thousands and millions of people will be benefit from, from uh, your contribution. That's very important that uh, we have to overcome those kind of obstacles because people don't, are not willing uh, to be a volunteer. We, we uh, saw a family um, who have one person came down uh, with COVID-19. We went ahead and invited them to be our volunteers and uh, they said that, oh, I'm too busy and uh, I'm worried about the safety of the drugs and so on. So, so this kind of thing, I think we really need more campaign uh, toward the positive attitude about supporting, participating, um, whatever they can in clinical trials, in, the, in clinical research. Uh, otherwise, we will not be able to gain the new knowledge to help other people. Okay. The, uh. the second obstacle actually is um, we have very good control of the disease. So we don't have uh, volunteers uh, you know, as the patient to participate in the clinical trials because we control the COVID-19 disease very well, so we don't have the yeah. patients to enroll. Okay. That's right, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, next question, uh, what is the future of Cyprus and where will we stand in the international re clinical research arena? One of the things that Cyprus is aiming for is to be the first uh, facility in Thailand to be able to conduct first in human phase 1A trial, uh, which is not available at all in Thailand, um, and very few has been available uh, has has been um, set up in the region. So we are uh, uh, actually anticipate, you know, and eager, striving to to. Uh, uh, meet those standards in order to be able to uh, open the trials for um, you know the phase 1a trial or we can call first in human trial FIH so we are hoping that we will be able to conduct FIH uh, studies uh, at the end of this year oh. yes so very interesting yeah yeah it's a big endeavor uh, and you know we are um, uh, really, really hoping that we can do that, yeah. Okay, last question. I'm sure that you have the motto in your institution. Can you give us about the motto of Cyprus? So, uh, the motto here is, your success is our success. So, your, your success is, you know, the network success, the hospital, the investigators' uh, success is Cyprus success as well. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Professor Kunganya, for your valuable knowledge today. And that is the latest update of CIRAD Performance in order to make a difference for the patient well-being. I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you again next time soon. I'm Putinan. Goodbye. Sawadee